Hi guys and welcome to Agile World Wellness. Today we will talk about psychological safety and clarity. You know that our brain really hates uncertainty because when we're not certain about tomorrow, we are not safe because we don't know what are the risks and what are the monsters we are, which are waiting for us. Remember when we were kids, we were afraid of darkness and actually there is nothing scary about darkness that it's just not certain. You don't know what is there. You don't know who is there. You don't know anything. You cannot predict. You don't have a single illusion of control because you cannot impact the darkness as a zero clarity. At the workplace, at a horrible workplace where the manager really failed in the team members as well, there is not a lot of clarity. It's almost, you know, working in a total blindness. So what you need to do as a team player, uh, you need to contribute to total psychological safety and add more clarity. So what is clarity? Clarity, first of all, start, starts with every single player role description. What am I doing here? And it's not just the title and the business card, but this is your role and, you know, the clear expectations of what you're doing here. What are you what are you responsible for? What are the tasks that you should do, you must do, because this is, this is your piece of cake? And also, where are the areas for your decision making? Where is the final word uh, that you say, because you are the decision maker here? What are the areas where you need to contribute to the decision, but you need to align it? For example, with a group of people or maybe a supervisor or another guy from the cross-functional uh, team. And what are the areas where you are not responsible? You are not making the decision. You can contribute. You can um, share your opinion. You can assist. You can get in involved. But this is not your piece of cake. This is the piece of cake most probably from another person. And uh, he has it in his own job description. When I say job description, I don't, I don't mean a very boring, long, formalized document. No, this is something black uh, on white, written for yourself, accepted by yourself, aligned with your team members, with people you collaborate with, you're a supervisor. I am responsible for this and that. I'm making decisions for this and that. I'm not making decisions for this and that. And here I need to, I don't know, consult, align, confirm, and so on. This brings so much clarity. This is so simple. But when I talk with different teams, uh, on one-on-one -on -one especially, they say, you know, in our team, everybody is doing everything. I don't know who is responsible for that. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes somebody else. Sometimes we do it together. And also people really say that, you know, it's very painful when you don't know who is the final decision maker. And if you make the decision, uh, you risk to take that. And it's not, you know, formalized. It's not agreed between the team members. You feel like, who I took the risk. I make the decision. But maybe uh, I should have talked to somebody. Maybe I should have aligned. So you're afraid that it will have a bad outcome. If you're not making the decision, like you're procrastinating, you're expecting for some other people to make it, then also you may sometimes feel like, hey, they're not trusting me. I'm not the final decision maker. Uh, they are doubting my expertise. They don't let me do it on my own. I need to, to align it with some. Somebody, uh, you know, things happening, amygdala is creating many doubts, uh, being like um, suspicious to something, guessing something, doing projections. So you need to be very clear who is doing that. What? So if you have a team, it, it should be done for every person. It should be shared. It should be discussed and it should be confirmed. And since, you know, the project and, and the teams are changing, it's nice to also review it, to update it and keep going with a re refreshed vision on who is doing what. Decisions are important, but also the areas of expertise. We know that some teams are creating the, um, the mural or more mural boards where they have the list of all the team members. And then we have the different skills and abilities and capabilities and experts, uh, expertise and knowledge listed, which are needed for the team who can do what. And then everybody, you know, uh, puts a star uh, to the uh, skill mentioned. And so we have a very clear visualization of how many people can do one thing, how many people can do 
another thing. And this is very practical just because if you go to a sick leave or you're overwhelmed with another project or you have a business trip, then you can very clearly see who can really back up you, who can do the task instead of you if something happens. This is very practical. It also creates the psychological safety because it creates the resource. And at the same time, it's also the justification of your expertise, meaning that I'm Julia and I'm good in business strategy, in KPIs, in making presentation, doing the public speech, whatever. And if I put it there and we discuss it and nobody in the team, you know, tells me that, you know, based on feedback, you're not very good in public skills or making presentations, we take it out. At least, you know, I understand that, okay, this is the area of trust where a team thinks, you know, I am good enough for this project. And this is where maybe I need to develop or I just need to put it on hold. And this is where I don't don't really engage in this expert, but it's transparent, it's clear, it justifies who has what advantages, skills, capabilities, talents, knowledge, you know, who can do what actually, and who is good at these things and can be considered as an expert. Also, this can serve not only just, you know, to feel that you're respected, to, to, to know that everybody knows who you are, what are your, what is your baggage of the talents, what you can do, but it's also very useful because then you know who to get in touch in case you have difficulties. If I, I can see from the skill board that there is John and he's uh, he, he has the competence, this and that, and I need some recommendations and contributions, some help, I can contact John because he's considered one of the contributors, the experts in this area. And then you also update this because people are getting training, they're uh, learning by doing, they're developing. So it might be you haven't been an expert in a certain um, I don't know, Java, for example, but you learned and you trained yourself and then poop, we put a star and now you're in Java expert as well. And that's official. So official, formalized in the artifact, visualized, accepted by the team. It adds so much clarity. What else? Um, we need to be cl clear on our goals, on our objectives, like really what is our objective now? What will be the next phase? What is the next objective? Why is this objective now a priority? What, what will it give us? You know, some justification, some rationals behind it. Also, uh, we need to be clear what are the tasks which will help us to reach the goal. And when we have a lot of tasks in our background, we need to be super clear why these tasks are prioritized, why these tasks are of second priority, and these are deprioritized. We need to have the why part um, behind the tasks as well. We need to have the who part who is the final responsible person. It needs to be only one person. Even if one task engages many people, there should be one who is the holder. Otherwise, everybody will be thinking he's doing that or he's doing that and not taking the, you know, the full responsibility. Um, you need to also behind every task understand why is this task important? What will it give us? What benefit? How it will move us closer to the objective? And of course, deadlines, yeah, we need to be clear. And it's so basic. Uh, we know the smart objective tool that we have the time bound objective, but very often in everyday discussion, when, for example, we talk about smaller tasks, when people brief each other in a written or oral form, they, you know, say this needs to be done, but when, you know, how critical is that? And also, even if it's told, you know, it needs to be done by Friday, why Friday? What's the justification? Our brief needs to have clarity. Why Friday? Because Friday, five o'clock, we need to share a report with top management. So by five, we need to make it ready. So I have 30 minutes to put the data and then send it and then voila, it's ready. So uh, it's very important um, uh, for people to understand some background, you know, why the tasks, why the objectives, why uh, why deadlines, and also the how part is important. So how do they expect us to, um, to make these tasks? What are the limitations? Uh, what I really shouldn't do? And what are my, the expectations? What should I do? You know, the talented leaders, they can set the tasks in the way that they are super crispy, transparent, like diamonds. And because of that, they shine, they engage, they more 
motivate and you want to run and you get the diamond and, you know, you polish it and then you, you solve the task and you want another one. Um, how else? The clarity can be reached by instant feedback. We need to be clear um, what are our relationships. We need to be clear whether we are okay to work in a certain way and interact and socialize in a certain way. We need to be clear whether everything is fine or not fine. Uh, what are the next steps? What are the ways of working? And ways of working are very important. I always propose to the teams to create the manuals. Very inspired by IKEA, uh, we which really disrupted the market with very simple instructions on how you can set up a table or a sofa or anything else which seems to be super complicated. You think that people are less complicated than a sofa? Oh, no. To work with us, we need a manual with 200 pages at least, and it won't be enough because so socialization and communication seems to be the hardest part to work, and it requires a lot of social and emotional intelligence. But what if uh, you propose to the team to create a manual about himself and then share it and discuss in the team? So it's just one A4 paper with not too much text. And then you write an instruct, instruction on how to work with me. What are the best ways of working with me where I feel motivated, I'm excited to work, I'm engaged, and I do, I'm do i doing the best uh, version of myself in the workplace. So, you know, because people are diverse, they're very different. Somebody likes talking on the phone. Somebody has it as a blocker. Um, this is me. For example, I would prefer hundreds of audio messages or text messages instead of just a very unexpected call, which disrupt, disrupts the whole atmosphere I have created to work in an efficient way. Uh, and you need to write it in the manual then. What are the means of communication? What are the times of communication that you prefer? Um, also, uh, whether you are very sensitive to critics and you need more appraisal and gratitude than others, whether um, you your values are this and that, and, be, and because of this, in communication, you respect that and that. So write a manual as if you were writing a manual on how to adjust a table, but, but this table is you, yes, and uh, make the expectations clear. What do you expect from people? How to communicate with you? How to work with you? How to delegate to you? How to discuss things to you? How to give you feedback? Uh, how to spend fun time with you? You. So the work uh, is also quite fun. Manuals would also work if we did a manual for our family members. Wouldn't you agree? We have a manual how to uh, how to um, to live uh, and communicate with our kids and our grandparents and our parents and husbands and uh, nephews and co cousins. It would be much easier, you know, if we took time to write and to share, then to comment, um, have a good laugh about our diversity, and then be clear what what hurts and what we really need and what our values and what we respect. Um, so very clear things like what's your role, what you're doing, what's your manual, uh, what are the objectives, what are the tasks, what are the deadlines, what are the whys behind it all. Uh, very open instant feedback for clarity, visual visualization of the things, Kanban boards, mural boards, which also add clarity and certainty. Asking always um, questions which help you to precise and clarify the clarification questions. Can you bring me an example? Can you tell me why it is so? Can you tell me more? Can you tell me why it is so? Yeah, just, just more questions which clarify and make it more crystal clear. Thank you so much, guys. I wish your teams to really feel psychologically safe and ask questions, have a diverse environment and have fun at work. Bye-bye. Have a good day.